Welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm your host, Dame Lillian Walker, and today we are talking about the first step on how to get over a breakup in five steps. So the first step that I talked about in the intro video talks about soul tie contracts. Many of you have probably never heard of a soul tie contract or a soul tie connection that you have with another individual. Now, when I first heard about this, I heard about this from the wife of a youth pastor who had um, two or three hundred uh, Basically, they were college students, and this is something that they dealt with routinely. So when I was first introduced to this particular concept, I was having it come onto my awareness from the spiritual realm. Since then, I have learned a lot because I've become certified under multiple different neurosomatic processes in dealing with neuroscience, neuroendocrinology, etc. And so I know a lot of the science that's behind this now. So I guess none of that really matters because when you are suffering a breakup, whether you broke up with someone or someone broke up with you, or you mutually dis decided to break up with each other, whether it was today, yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, if you haven't dealt with that pain, that pain will persist. And so let me, to recap a little bit about my story, why I'm doing this was March 23rd of 2019, I had an abrupt breakup with my boyfriend and as a result I knew that it was completely over, that was it, and that we were going our separate ways. There was no looking back. It was really crystal clear at that point. So needless to say, you know, I really loved him. So I did not want to suffer. I did not want to go through any unnecessary pain and I'm sure you don't want to go through any unnecessary pain. We recognize that yes, there's a certain amount of pain that is involved in a breakup, but you don't want to suffer. So I said, I don't want to suffer. I, want, I, I don't want to suffer unnecessary pain. And so I instinctively went through these different processes. And the first thing I knew I needed to do was to break the soul tie contract that I had with him. And so that's the first thing I did. I closed my eyes. I went into my room and in quiet solitude, I sat down, I slowed down my breath, I slowed down my heart rate, I was, I was crying, I was sobbing, as you might be, and as I just sat down and was feeling, I was allowing myself to feel what I was feeling in every way, shape, or form. I paid attention to what my heart was feeling, my emotional heart, my physical heart, um, because make no mistakes, my heart got all riled up when this took place, as I'm sure, sure yours must have as well. And so I was feeling physical things in my chest, in my heart. I was having these sensations throughout my body, so I allowed myself to feel. So I want you to know that what you can feel, you can heal. More on that later. So as I proceeded to do this, I knew that it was necessary to cut the soul tie contract. And I was very passionate about this. I was, make no mistake, I was gonna make sure that it was chopped up. So as I closed my eyes, slowed down my breath, slowed down my heart rate, I got into that quiet, still place. I allowed myself to feel, and then I, I said to the divine, I said to God, to the universe, I said, okay, here I am, you know, you know everything. I don't need to recap everything that's gone down. I do not want to suffer. I do not want to have pain. So I want to cut this soul cut tie contract. I want to, whatever soul tie I have, I want to cut it now. And so I saw myself and everything was, you know, when you close your eyes, everything is in the darkness. So as I was in this state, I saw myself I didn't see myself in the state that I am now. I saw myself kind of as this um, 
in the darkness that was around me, I was kind of a light body. There was a little bit of darkness, but there was like a light silhouette, if you will. And then there was obviously him and he was in front of me as well. And so as I saw, it's almost like a spirit body. I don't really know what to call it. I just know what I saw and I'm trying to describe it so that you guys can relate and understand and apply this. So as I saw that, I noticed that there was a giant cord, actually, coincidentally, just so happens, it was about the thickness of this candle. And it was a giant silver cord and it came from my chest, it was directly connected into his. And I said, I gotta cut this soul tie connection. So I took out these big shears, they were giant shears that had, and again, this is all in my imagination, they had wood handles, it had a little red thing at the top, and then these two giant blades that came out like this, and then you just, you sometimes see gardeners use these big shears. So I, even though I was standing here, I went up to the cord that was between the both of us, and then I just chopped, 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 chopped. I just, I wanted that cord in a million pieces, because I didn't want any possibility of the cord growing back. So I went up there and I just chop, 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 between myself and him until the whole floor was littered with all this, this silver cord all over the ground. So it was just a pile all under me. And as I saw that, then I tossed the shears, I grabbed all these pieces, and then I threw it in a fire. That was too, a very large fire. I just threw it and it immediately was consumed. It burned up, it dissolved. And then I felt an energy shift. The energy from my doing that, there was, it was like the energy had been converted into a positive uplifting energy. And so I just saw that it just vanished and it just dissolved in the fire like that. And I felt better about it. And then I said, aside from this soul tie that I have, I realized that there's a soul contract here. I gotta get rid of this soul contract. I've learned the lessons. Some of them have already been revealed. Others have yet to be revealed. This lesson has been learned. Um, any abusive language, emotional abuse, any kind of abuse, done, over with, never will it re repeat itself anything that's oppressive, depressive, repressive in nature, anything that is not uplifting, uh, loving, and uh, in a feel-good manner for me, because part of it was that his languaging and his communication to me was one that would discount, would not honor me. It wasn't an energy that uplifted me. In fact, it dr brought me down. You know what, second and last time ever, I'm ever going through this again, and so I grabbed the soul contract and the same thing. I ripped it up into a million little pieces, grabbed it, threw it into the fire, saw that it immediately vanished. It was consumed by the fire instantaneously. And then I took the fire, I moved it behind me so that it's in the past. I moved it behind me. So now it's in my past. And then I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know how this all works, um, but thank you for taking my pain. Thank you for letting me keep the lessons. Thank you for revealing me whatever it is I need to know. And um, I was just in a place of gratitude and I was in appreciation and I just thanked the divine, I thanked God. And then I let it go and I had, I had, when I, when I first started this, when I first went into my room after the breakup, um, I didn't do this immediately. I went into my room and I first just cried. I just cried it out. I allowed myself to cry as much as I felt I needed to. And then once I kind of settled down, that probably, it wasn't looking at a clock, but it lasted several hours. So once I was good and done purging all that grief and that sorrow and that sadness and that hurt, then I did this, this meditation. And um, I, will, I will create a meditation that will walk you through it so that you know exactly what to do. Since then, I've become certified 
in different neurosomatic processes, neurolinguistic programming, regression technologies, and so forth. And now I understand, because I also have a medical background, I understand how the brain is wiring and firing. And there is um, things that are happening neurochemically and biophysically to your body when you're actually doing this. But I didn't know that at that time. So that, did, that knowledge didn't come until much later. The bottom line is that once I let go of it and I released it, I didn't have any expectation of anything. I didn't have an anticipation of anything. I knew uh, that I would feel better eventually, but I didn't know how soon. So I didn't sleep that evening. However, I finally did go to sleep at around six in the morning, woke up at eight o'clock in the morning. And even though I only had two hours of sleep, when I woke up, I woke up refreshed. I felt as fresh as a daisy and I felt free. So when I woke up and got out of bed, I said to myself in my mind, I thought, wow, I feel really good. And my brain, my left brain was trying to make sense. It's like, how can I feel so good if I just went through this breakup? And so I'm trying to make sense of it, but I'm thinking, I feel great. I feel free. I feel light. I feel refreshed. I only slept two hours. Um, that was a, you know, that was a difficult evening. And so I was kind of like perplexed at how could this, how could I feel this good on the heels of something so bad? So I got up, brushed my teeth. When I got dressed, went into the kitchen, went to make breakfast. And, um, and then he was there cause he had slept on the sofa. Um, when I told him to leave the night before, he didn't want to leave because it was Friday night, driving to LA, yada, yada. So I said, fine. So he, he crashed on the sofa. And so I saw him in the morning and I had no feeling, no ill will, no grudge, no resentment. Um, I didn't harbor any kind of negative feelings. I was just in this state of feeling free. I was free and fresh and refreshed, even though I only had two hours of sleep. So I thought, this is, uh, this is amazing. And so I just, very matter of fact, made my breakfast and I knew that I was going to be, I had to follow him to his home to go pick up my e-bike because my e-bike was stored at his home because we would ride, usually we'd go from LA to Malibu, Pacific Palisades and so forth. Long story short, um, that was step one and I was really very much in awe because the entire day I was in this state of being fresh and free, fresh and free. I felt fresh, refreshed, and free. It was like a giant load had been taken off my back over my entire body, my whole persona. Um, I knew that this was the right thing to do before um, um, we broke up and I knew it was the right thing to do afterwards. And that was confirmed. And I gotta tell you, I have had quantum, extraordinary results that have happened after that breakup. And I'm sure the same will be true for you if you open yourself to that possibility, not probability, but to that possibility. So that is step one. Join us for the next video where I will go over step two. And I would encourage you to check out the video testimonial from a gal from Costa Rica who actually did this process and the same day that she had her breakup she reached out to me and um, you'll hear the testimonial and there are other people who have had testimonials too I'd still need to compile them so I'll put them together so that you guys can check them out too but one of the steps of the five steps is you know helping someone else so I immediately reached out to people who are who I saw were suffering and going through you know the remnants of what happens when you go through a breakup and I'm like listen you guys don't have to go through this difficult pain and suffering this is what I did and you can do it through you can do it too and let me let me help you walk through it and that in the few days that ensued I ended up doing all five steps and the rest is history it's not a mystery anymore and now there's some there's some neuropsychology neuroendocrinology neurochemistry that um, I'll, after you watch the five 
videos, the five steps, then I'll unpack some of that. You might want to watch that because then maybe it'll maybe, maybe it'll maybe, you don't have to be perfect to do this, you see? Perhaps it will help you understand intellectually what is going on biophysically inside your body and you'll understand why it is that this is so effective. So, and then you can stop fighting yourself because some people will fight themselves and it's like, oh, it's not gonna work for me, it's gonna work for others. This is not true. It can work for everybody. This has to do with how your body is wired. So, thank you for tuning in, tapping and turning on to listening to step one of the five steps on how to get over a breakup. My friends and gems, I appreciate you a great deal. Please tell me what has worked for you. Let me know what has worked for you. Please send me a video, tag me on Facebook, do a Facebook um, live and share how this benefited you. Put it on my wall, I would love to see that. I would love to compile as many of these as possible so that I could share them. I might write a book about this in the future and think about all the people that we can help. So let me know how this has helped you, what you felt, when you did it and afterwards. And let's use the comments below as an online classroom. You can ask me anything you want. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in to Love and Money Secrets TV and this series on how to get over a breakup in five steps. Ciao for now.